Silent night. Morning all. Today's Christmas decoration are these cordless Christmas tree candles and they're also the subject of this video. Now these items have the North Light brand, uh, same as the colour uh, LEDs, the RGB LEDs, two pin pulse controlled, mysterious LEDs. So it's the same brand, they came from Class Olsen. And uh, this is a beautifully presented set of 16 candles and a remote control to switch them on and off. Now I've only got enough batteries to operate eight of these things. Each one takes an AA battery in the stem of the candle. Quite nice design that. Uh, the remote control takes a CR2032, I think. Uh, oh no, it's a CR2025. And uh, you press the on button and the candles light. You press the off button and they go out. Now it doesn't always work if I partially obscure this. Uh, oh, it seems to be working quite well now. But they don't always all light or all go out. Damn it, they're all doing it this time. Totally reliably. Right, okay, to make this rather feeble point, I've put uh, insulation tape over the remote controller, leaving a very narrow slit in front of the infrared LED there. And now, only some of them light when the remote control is directly over them. And similarly, only some of them go out. So this rather simulates the need in conventional candles to light each one individually. Okay, they light in groups. But the nerd in me quite likes the idea that you light them a bit like traditional candles. I just quite like that idea, so maybe I'll leave that insulation tape on there. Now, unlike traditional candles, have you noticed something? Yeah, they don't flicker. I mean, come on, North. These candles should flicker. If Wilkinson's can make little flickery tea lights, then surely North light can make flickery candles. So these are going to have to be hacked. So let's have a look at one of these candles. Um, if I unscrew the body of the candle from its base, this clip thing, you can see uh, how the battery arrangement works. And up inside there, mm, let's get a closer look at that. You can uh, make out that there's uh, an infrared remote receiver there. That's the black square thing at the bottom. Uh, just underneath that, between it and the PCB, there looks like there's an 8-pin chip. And then there's clearly an inductor on the top of the board. So we've got a remote control receiver and probably a boost converter because we have to take the 1.5 volts of this alkaline cell up to the sort of voltage that uh, a warm white LED requires, which is about three volts. Right, well now I just tried to get this off. It's got uh, slightly, uh, it's sort of got these two clips and one of them broke in the process, which is a little unfortunate. It does still kind of fit on there, but once the uh, hack has been done, that may require a bit of glue, that's fine. And I've got to try and get that ring off the top and that looks like it's glued in. But there is a little gap there, so I'm going to get my knife in there. I mean, I do have the advantage that if I make a complete pig's ear of the first one, there are 15 more to uh, experiment with, but that doesn't seem very keen to come out of there. I'll keep working on that. Well, I'm making a bit of a mess of this. The uh, cylindrical surround is all a bit disturbed now. And I'm just thinking, actually, maybe there's a better way to do this. This is only a standard warm white LED, so it's not worth keeping. If I attempt to lift that a little bit, because the legs go down and then bend round onto the PCB. And now if I bend it backwards and forwards, and if hopefully the legs break off just under the base of the LED, I might just be able to get my soldering iron onto these two points to solder a new LED on. There's plenty of height inside the um, cover here, so I can have the LED raised up a little bit. I think I might go for that. However, for this first one, I think I'm going to have to completely 
muller this thing, this top piece, because otherwise we're not going to get to see the PCB. And we want to see the PCB, so one of these is going to be destroyed. Right, okay, so this bit uh, is pressed into uh, this outer housing and it has a little retaining clip, so I could have pulled this out probably without so much destruction, but uh, here's the PCB and the sort of wire running down to pick up the bottom of the uh, battery. Oh, that reminds me. Look at this in the instructions. Operating instructions, unscrew the clip base and insert an AA LR6 battery into each of the candles. Observe the correct polarity as shown in the picture below. Now, I couldn't have drawn a more ambiguous drawing of an AA cell than that, because is that the top or the bottom of the battery? Have a guess, I'll give you a few seconds. Well, actually it's the bottom of the battery because you put the positive side into the top of the candle. That's actually the bottom. I mean, come on, North. Would it have really been so difficult to just put a plus and a minus on there? Ridiculously ambiguous. Right, let's have a look at this circuit board. So we've got um, a classic style infrared receiver module there. Uh, the LED, just warm white, a resistor. Mmm, now that's made me think. The other LED is not really a current controlled device. It's uh, a chip controlled LED, the flickering LED that I'm going to put in here. So, yes, that is an issue. Uh, I've got to have to think about that. Right, let's have a look at this chip. Let's see if it's anonymous or it's got a number on it. Oh, that looks like it's anonymous. Can't see anything on there. On the back, we've got a device. Can't quite read that uh, thing on there. There's an inductor there, presumably to boost 1.5 volts up to around 3 volts. So now the question is, when I put the flickering LED in there, I suppose actually, I'm just going to shove it in and see what happens. Right, I'm just going to solder on this uh, single AA holder so that I can put the uh, the battery in and get this thing powered up. And then I will replace the LED with a flickering LED. So how's the mold doing on my sponge? Oh yeah, that's growing quite nicely there. Uh, so yes, the first LED will be this one, which I took out of one of those um, flickering LEDs. Is it that way around? Yes, it is. Yeah, that's flickering quite nicely. So I think I'll put this in uh, with that current limiting resistor first, and then if it's not very good, I'll solder a blob across the current limiting resistor and see how we go with that. Right, on the flickery LED, uh, the anvil is negative, and on the standard warm white LED, the anvil is also on the negative side. That's the cathode. Yes, current will flow that way through that current limiting resistor and down to ground. So I put this in with the anvil to cathode, same as this LED. Okay, that's fine. These retaining wings do irritate me, so I'm going to bend those right out because they just get in the way. Which I suppose I should just cut. Ooh, it's a bit aggressive. Uh, cut them right off. Just really annoy me, those things. These tea lights are quite interesting because that thing, which looks like a switch, that thing there, uh, isn't a switch. Let me just get the battery out. If I can get the battery out. Uh, no, it's not a switch. Let me just pull this apart. I can't remember how that comes out, so I'll just pull it. Yeah, it's just um, a piece of plastic with a slot in it that pushes the LED leg towards the battery. So yeah, it's not a switch at all. It's just that piece of plastic, which in some ways is good because it means that the uh, LED comes out without any solder on it, ready to use. It's quite excellent, really. Right, let's just check this uh, with the original LED in, so that's the non-flickery. 
Yeah, that works. Off. On. Off. Right, I'm now going to just solder in a flickery LED. Right, before I solder this, I've just poked the wires through the hole. Let's see if that works. On. Oh yeah, that works really nicely. Flickery candle LED. So it doesn't look like I need to short out that resistor. I mean, it is only 33 ohms, so it's not doing a lot in terms of limiting current. I mean, the LED itself is going to be drawing about the same current as the original LED. It's just that there's a chip there in between. I mean, a chip should really have a constant voltage within its VDD upper and lower range. But the numbers are all roughly the same, so it just works. Let's compare uh, this one running off one and a half volts with a boost converter with the original flickery T light. Uh, Anvil was negative, wasn't it? Oh, they're the same, aren't they? They're just as bright. In fact, if anything, the uh, boosted one is ever so slightly brighter, so that's pretty good. Right, let's solder it in. It's always a good idea to solder stuff with the power on. No, it's not. I'm lying. Don't follow that advice. Never solder stuff with the power on. Right, let's bend that up very close to the PCB because I want that LED roughly centered. In fact, I'm going to bend it slightly over center because I think this slides down into these grooves roughly center. And actually that's given me an idea for removing this top piece uh, when I do the other ones. And that is put the battery in and just force something up in there to pop the top off. I think that's going to work. All right, let's take these wires off, which are no longer needed. That one I had to be careful not to solder it too near to where the tip of the AA touches this uh, tinning on the edge of the board. It's very interesting that connector, the tinning runs from the one side of the board down the edge and round onto the other side. Looks like uh, that's quite a hard thing to achieve. Right, that board slides down into there. This then fits over the top. I think the board runs up into those two grooves. Yes, I think it does. And then that, oh yes, that's very tight, but that clips in there. That could take a lot of force to push that back out. Uh, okay, so the battery slides down in there. And then we need the uh, base to screw on. Like so. And now we need the candly top bit to fit in there, which it kind of still does. I could apply some glue. That's not too badly uh, destroyed. Okay, let's try it. Right, here we go. Uh, remote control on. Oh, it is a bit dimmer than these. These are quite bright, but it's nicer, isn't it? Flickery candle light. That's much nicer. So come on, North. If you're watching North Light, you can put flickery candle LEDs in your candles with no modifications to the circuit. Right, I think it's time to uh, decorate my Christmas tree. So uh, cheerio and Merry Christmas. Sorry.